My name is Nuala Nicrohor. I'm from Dublin, Ireland, but I live in Galway, Ireland. Um, I'm a full-time writer since 2004. I write novels, short story collections, some poetry, small bit of poetry. I do reviews. I teach creative writing. I mentor creative writing students. So I do a lot of different things. So great. And how did you get into it? How did you know you were a writer? Um, I've always been writing since I was a kid, but it wasn't until I met another writer, a professional writer, who sort of said, why are you hiding stuff away, when I kind of mentioned that I was writing. So that, at that point I decided I'll go and do a few workshops. This was in my, I suppose I was about 26. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and I did like a 12 week short story workshop, then I did a 12 week poetry workshop in the local arts centre. And out of those groups, we formed a group of women writers and we met every fortnight for two years and we wrote, we had to bring a piece of work to the group. So it kept you writing, it kept you writing and we shared a lot of information about publishing. We all started to get published in the local magazines at the same time. And then eventually I had enough poetry for a collection so I approached a local publisher and my first poetry collection came out in 2003. 2003, yeah. And then really fiction was what I was more interested in, so I was writing short stories and publishing them, and I had enough for a collection. And I started to win some literary competitions. So I won a few really good ones, and at that point I decided I'm going to try and do this full time. So that's what I did, and haven't looked back. <laughs> and since when did you say? 2004 I went okay. full time. So I suppose about nine. Nine years now. So you just stopped whatever you were doing for work to create an income and just full time into the writing? Yeah, I had two children at that point so I was always working part time anyway. I didn't work full time once I had children so um, I was working in a writer's centre as a project development worker. Prior to that I had worked in a library, I had worked in a bookshop. So. All of the jobs I had taken, like in arts administration and in, you know, everything was about books, about writing, so it should have been obvious to me <laughs> that this was my path. But it took me a while to to realise that you could be a writer, really. I thought there was some magic formula, or it was for other people, or these people knew something that I didn't know. But I discovered as I wrote with other people and started to get published and started to meet a lot of professional writers, started to go to literary festivals, make connections. Um, I think maybe in America there's more conferences than festivals and that's where you make your connections. So it would be important to go to them, you know, to meet agents, publishers, people who produce magazines, to see where you would like to be published because it has to suit you. I, I'm quite introverted, I'm quite shy, so a small publisher suited me. I wanted to be with somebody that I could work with very closely and we did and I learned a lot about the publishing process by publishing my first book. And they took my next three books. So I had a you know, a good, friendly, close relationship with them, but I'm ambitious. And so I had a novel written and actually that small publisher encouraged me to take it elsewhere. He said, you need a bigger publisher really when it's a novel. So I got an agent for that novel. But unfortunately the novel languished with that agent for five years, he didn't manage to sell it. and. Um, he's a very, very nice man, but not really into email and things like that. So a very slow, a sort, of, sort of a slow process was his style. And I was starting to get impatient. So I took the book back and I found a publisher for it myself. So I had written the novel between 2003 and 2004, but it didn't get published until 2010. So that was quite a long sort of time to be sitting on a novel, you know. Um, but in the meantime, I was still writing and I had short story collections out and poetry collections. So since then, I've written two more novels, one of which is coming out in the spring. It's set in Scotland and Ireland. Um, a lot of my themes are similar in the sense that I like to explore women's lives and motherhood and the breakdown of love and women's and the body and those sort of things. So. Um, the one in that's the novel that's coming out in the spring, I don't have a title for it yet, but we're still debating title, um, is about a girl who has a baby and gives the baby up for adoption. And then 20 years later has another baby and it's what happens then 
you know, that calls to mind this other child she had, and of course she has to go and find the child and that sort of stuff. So, Ooh. so things are progressing slowly, but that's I, I kind of tend to write quickly, but my publication happens at a slower pace. And you will find this about being a writer that the publishing world generally moves at a sort of a glacial pace. So you will have your book finished, but it may not be on the shelf for two years. Because there's things that have to happen in the meantime. Well, they have a list of books that are coming out. So they need time to get your cover right and to you know, start pre-publicity about your book. So it, you have to have patience to be a writer, basically. <laughs> patience with yourself and patience with the world of publishing. But it's extremely rewarding. I'm my own boss, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I choose what external work to do. So I teach creative writing. I write reviews. I mentor students who are doing the BA in creative writing and other students who are doing other degrees but who are interested in writing. Um, so I can do that work from home. I do my writing from home. I have three children. All three are out of the house for three hours every morning, Monday to Friday. So that's when I write. So I'm quite disciplined and you will find if you have children and are a writer, you must be disciplined because it's your job. You need to get to that desk, get your work done, and then there's room for everything else. Um, but I have chosen this life and it suits me very well. So I get to be on my own, which is important to me because I'm, you know, shy and like being on my own and enjoy my own company. But I also like being social and I get that aspect through, I keep a literary blog, I get it through that, I get it through Facebook and email, but I also get it through teaching and through attending literary festivals, reading at festivals, teaching workshops at festivals, that kind of thing. And so I have a great network of fellow writers in Ireland and in the UK and in America and what I love about the writing world is the support that we give each other the emotional support as much as the oh you know have you heard that such an anthology is looking for stories I think you should send something to them you know there's a huge amount of give in the writing world and I love that I love the generosity of the writers I tend to steer clear of the less generous ones you know so I have my network of people um, that you know we have so much in common and we have great conversations about other people's books about our own books about hopes you know because I've had this is my third agent now this new one so I haven't had a lot of luck with agents um, some of my writing friends don't have agents at all I live in a small country you don't need an agent but it's nice to have one if you want to be published in the UK or the States because they're big big markets compared to our tiny little Irish market. So, um, you know, there are differences between, from country to country as to how your writing career can, can progress. But if you work really hard, and I think that's the key thing, if you write a lot and work really hard and get your work out there, so send your work out, don't sit on it, send it out and always have four or five pieces of work out in the world, whether it's, you know, five short stories or, you know, two stories and a poem or a novel and just keep it out there because something, some editor is bound to like what you do. And it's a matter of finding that person. You're not always going to find the right person instantly. So try not to be discouraged. And really what writers need above all is stick with it ability. You need to be able to realize that you are motivating this. And this is a career, what shall we call it, a path. But there is no end point. You, the path along which you go is the thing. It's you're growing all the time. You're getting. You become a better writer by writing, but there's no end point. Even if you win the Nobel Prize for Literature, as Alice Munro recently did, or even if you win the Man Booker Prize, that's you're not suddenly at the pinnacle and it's all over. Mm -hmm. You still have to sit down the next day and start the next book, and the next book may not be a big hit. So it's it's a process of starting over. But the challenge and the beauty and the joy is in that as well. So you have to be a good self-motivator maybe to be a writer. You also have to be pretty determined. It's, it's the sort of determined people who get ahead. You can have buckets of talent, but if you can't discipline yourself and if you can't sort of motiv motivate yourself every day to get on with it, it wouldn't, won't matter how talented you are. So... Uh, being organised can be a very good skill as a writer, being able to meet deadlines, um, being able to take editorial feedback as well, which generally, if it's coming from professionals, you need to listen to them. They're usually right. Um, 
So yeah, it's a very, I find it very rewarding. It completely suits my personality. It suits my life because I like having time with my children. I like having time with my husband. So you choose your path as to your personality. So you decide, do I like spending, if you want to be a writer, do I like spending a lot of time by myself? Am I able to do that? Um, but am I also able to get out and talk about my writing? Because it's important to be able to do that. It's not just... People think this business of self-promotion is new. It's not new. Charles Dickens went around Europe talking about his books, you know. Truman Capote said, a boy's got to hustle his book. This happened, you know. So this is not new. The internet is your friend. You can self-promote on the internet, but you do eventually have to get out in the world and read your work and, and meet your readers and talk to people. And it's extremely enjoyable, even when you're shy. <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, it's it's a very rewarding career. Uh, financially, not so rewarding for me because I write literary fiction. I don't write commercial novels. But there is always the chance that a literary novel will become a commercial hit. I don't know what that is. Literary fiction is... Um, okay, let's say what commercial fiction is... They're usually these big fat books. They may have a pink cover with a pair of high heels and a handbag on it. Okay. They're beach reads, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. chick lit or something like mm -hmm. that. So they're a very easy read. Um... There isn't a huge amount of attention paid to language in them. They're easy to read and people sort of consume them. But literary fiction is more like there's a huge attention to language and story. Uh, they're very much about humanity and how people are with each other. They can be dark, but they can also be humorous. Um, so someone like Alice Munro writes literary fiction. Someone like William Trevor, um, you know, Rick Moody. I'm just trying to think of American writers now. Um, so there's differences in sort of the monetary reward for both things because commercial fiction and crime novels and all of those sell very well literary fiction tends to sell in smaller numbers mm. um, so I don't get huge advances my books don't sell in the thousands and thousands but you know I can earn a modest living but I'm happy with that you know, my husband has a job, he can pay the mortgage. <laughs> um, but we live sort of, um, we live in a quiet place and we live modestly and that suits us, you know, mm -hmm. it suits how we are. So those are the choices you have to make. Obviously, if you have a commercial hit, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and how about, Nula, when you're, um, when you're finished with something or do you edit in, in process? How do you go over your work before you decide you're ready to submit it? How do you know when you're finished? I tend to edit as I go along. And then, so if I'm writing a novel, I set myself a word count of 500 a day, sort of modest word count, something achievable. Um, and so the next morning when I sit at my desk, I will take yesterday's words and I will read them aloud so I can hear the musicality of the prose and I will edit as I go. And then I start from there and go on and do the, that day's work. That's how I try to do it. Um, but when I have the novel sort of maybe almost finished, I will go back and forth in it a lot to make sure everything is flowing correctly, you know, that somebody's name doesn't change halfway through the book or, you know, something anomalous doesn't happen. Um, and then once that's finished and either an editor or an agent looks at it, they will usually have suggestions. So they might say, OK, the action needs to start near the start. It's taking too long for the story to take off. So you, you rejig it as according to their suggestions. Um, and you, you, you edit it a couple of more times yourself to make sure that you're satisfied with it. As satisfied as you can be, you're never going to be happy. And then send it off and hopefully some nice publisher wants to take it. <laughs> um, I have been lucky, I have to say, in my career that... I've only had I've only abandoned two books really that that I just didn't they didn't work so I reached a certain point in a historical novel I was writing about a German artist and I realized this is not making me happy it's not going anywhere it, it's not alive on the page I now have to just call a halt to this and it was two years work so it was kind of hard wow I had been writing stories in the meantime as well in tandem with it so um so I just parked it and, and have never really done anything with it. And then there was another book I was writing. It was 20 short stories and they were linked. And again, my agent had it and I took it back. I said, you know what? I don't really want that published. It's not good enough. So I just took it back. And I actually used some of that 
because it was the same character, I used some of it in the novel set in Scotland. So, you know, my advice would be don't throw anything away, keep everything, because there may be even one good sentence in something that you're abandoning that you can use elsewhere. So keep a notebook by your bed, keep a notebook in your handbag, um, you know, write down everything that occurs to you and keep it all. It's like an archive of your own work. Um, you know, and is that where you get inspiration from those notes you're taking or how do you get your inspiration? Just things I'm passionate about. Um, I'm interested in women's lives, I'm interested in motherhood and fertility and the body, I'm interested in visual art very much. I have a short story collection called Nude and it's all about the body and art or the body as lovers. So each story features an unclothed body and so I called the collection Nude as a sort of a unifying title for the book and um, it did quite well. It got, you know, critical acclaim anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't find inspiration a difficulty. I, I'm never sort of at a loss for something to write. There's always something kind of brewing and cooking. And I do think, I think that maybe because I have limited time, because I have a family that I don't have the luxury of writer's block or anything like that. I only have those 15 hours a week, so I use them I use them very well, you know. Um, people often say, well, you're very prolific, and how do you do it and all? And it's like, well, A, it's my job, and I work very hard, you know. But B, I don't, I don't squander the time I have, you know. I know a lot of um, writers who don't have children or writers who have grown up children, and they don't seem to be able to sit down and just do it. They seem to talk about it a lot or complain about it a lot. So I think it's a good idea to... Stop the negative voices in your head and just get the work done. Even if what you write does not make you happy, the whole action of your hand across the page or your fingers on the keyboard, you know, if you turn up to your desk every day, you're going to write one good sentence a day. I mean, you're bound to. But, you know, turn up every day and do it. Commit to it, you know. I think that's the most important thing. 